Okay, so one of the examples we did in class is we showed that the limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x is 2. So we're going to do a little scratch work to kind of uh, help with the proof. So this one's not quite as straightforward as the linear one we did in class. This one requires a trick. Um, so we're going to start out with, with what we want. So we want the square root of x minus 2, that's the distance between the function and its limit is less than epsilon, which means it's very close together. Um, and what we're going to go ahead and do, what we did in class, was we multiplied both sides of this inequality by the conjugate. And I think I even mentioned that here. So we're going to multiply both sides by the conjugate. And um, what that'll do is that uh, this is part of, the, part of the trick here. And that will condense down into x minus 4. And that's going to be less than epsilon times square root of x plus 2 in absolute value bar. Um, now, I want a fixed epsilon. I don't want it to move around as x moves around, so we're going to have to do some something to bound that square root of x plus 2. And so, um, we want to pick something that's pretty nice to bound it. Um, since we're taking a square root, let's put x in uh, 1 to 3, so or 1 to 9, so that the square root is in the interval 1 to 3. And then the square root of x plus 2 would be in the interval uh, 3 to 5. Now, the equivalent notation for that interval, saying that the square root of x plus 2 is an element of the interval 3 to 5, is the same thing as 3 less than square root of x plus 2 less than 5. Since these are all positive, if we take the reciprocal, the... Um, the uh, inequality is reversed. And this right here is what I'm going to end up wanting. So a lot of times what you have to do is you just kind of kind of work around the problem and, and play around with it, and you'll, you'll start finding what you need. Um, so let's go ahead and, and finish this thing off. Oh, that's not what I want to do. We want to, we want to play through this. Oops, let's see. Then I hit the play button. Okay says when x is an element of the set or the open interval 1 to 9 we have that this inequality the one I highlighted so if we go ahead and we do our uh, our proof we'll say let epsilon greater than 0 be given and I'm gonna let delta equal 3 epsilon Since x is bounded, it belongs to the set 1 to 3. Uh, let's see, is that what I wanted to say there? I think that might be... I think I meant to say 1 to 9. Sorry about that. Let's, let's go ahead and fix this. Um, 1 to 9. Sorry about that. All right, so that, that, ha that has our bounded uh, from, from before. Um, if 0 is less than x, I'm sorry, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 4, which is less than 3 epsilon, and that's our delta, that's our delta, then I can go ahead and factor that out, so we're going in reverse, and that's going to be less than 3 epsilon. So um, this is going backwards with the conjugates, and then... Uh, we can go ahead and divide by um, the square root of x plus, let's try again, uh, I'll write it like this, square root of x plus 2, so 3 epsilon times 1 over square root of x plus 2. Now because I had that inequality at the very top, that particular inequality here is less than a third and the third will cancel out the three and we'll be left with an epsilon. Um, so part of what I was doing as my scratch work to kind of figure out how to get these bounds to work is I knew I was going to be dealing with epsilon divided by square root of x plus two. And I knew that I was going to have to bound that somehow. So I started looking for nice things to bound the x by. So I chose 1 to 9 because when I take the square root, I get nice numbers like between 1 and 3. 
Um, and since I ended up dividing by square root of x plus 2 in, in, in this line here, um, I was going to try to find how, how could I bound that. And so that's why I took the reciprocals in the, in the previous step. So there was some working backwards with this, and then uh, and that's how it usually works with most of the most of these. Anyways, you're going to be presented a proof, and all the details about how it came up with are a lot of times uh, lost, and you have to make that discovery on your own. Um, anyway, so this gives us what we want. So we can say thus: the square root of x minus two is less than epsilon, and that gives us that this limit is what we said it was. Square root of x was a nice continuous function. If we want to evaluate the limit, uh, we just plug in. And there was a little bit of slight hand waving, meaning we didn't talk about some slight details about when I bound the x in this set one, one to nine. If I chose a large epsilon, um, we might have some some issues here. Uh, that's something you would worry about in in like an uh, lower division math, or not lower, upper division math class, you would worry a little bit more about that. Uh, we could pick a small enough epsilon so that because epsilon is equal to delta, the delta would be small enough that it would fit in this bounded region of 1 to 9.